Hey, this is PK of the PK Comic Book 411. I'm in a robe. I got a robe for Christmas and I can't seem to take it off. But let's just get right to it. I'm going to do a different format. This time I'm going to show you the gift up front so that you know that there's prizes in all of my vlogs. Literally, there's like three I put out there and no one's claimed them. Um, I'm also going to do best to worst. So, in a flash round, what are my favorites in the last two weeks? Here, 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 there, over what? So, let's go through them, and then we're going to go uh, through Marvel, DC, and then the Independents. So, the Darth Vader Annual. Now, you had Jason Aaron that's doing Star Wars, and Kieran Gillen that's doing Vader. Vader was supposed to be a mini, and it turned into an ongoing. Now, Jason Aaron's so spread thin, he's doing Goddamned, the Thor, Mighty Thor. He's so spread thin, it's like, hey, dude, Kieran, just do it. This one-shot story arc is beautiful. This could be a movie by itself. If you're not following Darth Vader or Vader Down crossover, get this one. I promise you, it's almost like Imagine Dune that we're getting other different races and societies and planets that aren't really in the Star Wars verse, but this one shows it. Vader dances in that? Check it out. Going on to uh, a DC title, which is the only DC title of that top six, is this. Now, there's going to be a six-part series. Each one has a different artist. This shit is dark. Awesome. Max Landis. So the first one was amazing Nick Dragota art from East of West, and this is the second one. I'm getting the hardcover for this. It's wow. What are we telling? And interesting here... What's, what's his middle name? Jay? Does anyone know? Let me know. Comments below. Tokyo Ghost. Rick Remender's done low in black science, but I swear this is still performing. It's supposed to be a four out of four, and I think they're up to six now. May turn into ongoing. It's, it's a love story and family at the end of it, just like Remender always does, but this is something else. Uh, I'm very glad that it went from four to six. Um, yeah, it's definitely on the pull list. Action-packed issue this time. Then... We go to a Grant Morrison title that is not Morrison Cray. And he better stick to that. Because the other one, Nameless, I'm almost done with him. Okay? This is beautiful. Dan Mora. Um, God, I want to say he does Hexed. Hexed or something. But this is a lovely, lovely art. It's more of a hero than, say, the last Moon Knight run. I mean, it's... It's Santa Claus as a freaking hero. It's more D&D than some Jim Zub stuff from uh, Pathfinder through Dynamite Publishing. During the Yule time, I figured uh, i put that out there. Hoping for a hardcover on that one. Um, I think it was Brian K. Vaughn in The Last Saga recommended Monstrous. This is shaping up to be a very dense, complicated, ornate, mystical book with a rich and deep history. The art is almost needlessly complex and, and, and ornate in a very good way. And there's so much like history dropping on you that I almost feel like I need to be taking notes. So I'm just going to, you know, I sort of read it first and read it again. Autumn Land to me is my diamond in the rough. Um, it's quite a gem. I hope someone else is reading this. It's currently my top five uh, out of the last uh, titles. Pure fantasy. It, I, I really do love it. I mean... And I think he met another human in this one, which is very, very cool. It's uh, eight right now. Issue eight. Um, God, love the one-sided diatribe of that other human. Really cool. And I, everyone's sort of caught on to this. This is Birthright issue number 12. <clears throat> so, um, actually, excuse me. It was Joshua Williamson that recommended Monstrous. If you like Birthright, you'll like Monstrous, is what he's saying. Uh, the character... This is the winner of character development. Even though you have a lot of backstory and a lot of twists and a lot of uncertainties, this has character development. Yep. Um, so, to continue, there's the Star Wars Darth Vader. This is Vader Down Part 4. Why it doesn't have the badge, I don't know. Uh, I have to admit that after the both annuals, I sort of forgot the actual storyline of Vader Down. <coughs> but, does anyone know about Commander Carbon? I also noticed that in all the toys that my nephews got, uh, they don't have the satellite dish on the Millennium Falcon. At least they have it in that. That's pretty cool. Now we have the Star Wars Aaron, annual. Again, Jason Aaron, too busy. Kieran Gillen gets this, whereas he normally doesn't write Star Wars. Um, well, Enebre, 
is some sort of uh, spy, I guess, of the Rebel Army. It's, it's fun. It's fitting. Um, it's, it's a good one shot. You know, if you pick up the other uh, Vader annual, pick up that one if you're not following it. It's not on your pull list. Going on with Marvel, we have, finally, we have Squadron Supreme, number one. Um, and it, of course, it starts off with the eight months later, and each one is from a different universe, like 15199, 31444. But one of them says the new universe. So I'm very uh, interested in if that's the new universe versus 616. That would be very interesting, would it not? Other than that, dude, it's, there's, there's some death in here that must carry over in the new storylines. Illuminati, another Joshua Williamson. <coughs> he does Birthright and Illuminati, which is not the Hickman's New Adventures. Boy, do I miss the Hickman run. Don't we all, right? The two, three-year run. Illuminati now is now all a bunch of bad guys getting ready to do some uh, bad things. And the first issue I couldn't stand because it was like a Disney film with just the lips and the smiles and the noses. I mean, I thought I was looking at the, the girl under the sea one. Um, escaping me. You know what I'm talking about. But it had a Disney look to it. They sort of toned that down. I'm, I'm liking it very much better. Uh, Illuminati number two may get on my pull list. Now we have two Inhumans. The Uncanny Humans number three. The art is very nice, crisp, colorful, and Black Bolt talks in this. So you may want to get this. So Uncanny Humans Charles Soule is writing more about the royal family, whereas the all new Inhumans, which is Soule, but they also bring in Asmus, so you see Asmus and Charles Soule. Um, and uh, it's yet another Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. like marketplace. I just, Coulson, Mockingbird, it's just that when they put them in, it just feels so trying to me. But I have to admit, which I didn't know, this is Medusa's sister, uh, Crystal, I think it is, and she's an elemental. Um, I think I may just get all new humans because of her. Now going into Jeff Lemire, Lemire uh, Extraordinary X-Men. Now, I just read this trade. I want to recommend it. Some people are saying now it's sort of tailoring off again. He's doing like five titles with five new titles. God, is it he that is doing Moon Knight? I believe it's Abnett who did the Guardians of Infinity. Um, but he has like ten titles basically he's working on. This one it was really, really uh, well illustrated in a very different way it's all watercolor so let me just flip to any page all watercolor and it's a normal artificial intelligence asimov almost thing um but jeff lemire is also doing extraordinary x-men which you think is going to be the shat flagship Whew, must be the rope. Number two, three, and four I have here. So I went back, and you'd think it's giving us uh, hints about Cyclops. Um, there's a couple answers here, a little bit about Old Man Logan. Um, but uh, I didn't read Old Man Logan, so I don't know exactly where that fits in. But apparently he's from the future, and he doesn't really know what happened. So now we have uh, number three of Extraordinary X-Men by Jeff Lemire. And there's some cool writing here. Um, Uncanny X-Men is coming in January. That'll be the third X-Men title, I believe. Um, but, uh, I mean, Iceman Propagates, that's actually something that was Hickman brought up, I think. Uh, not positive. Um, yeah, I think it was in New Avengers. No, 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 it was all New X-Men, excuse me. That He propagates, made sort of a snowman monster. So that was sort of cool to see. Um, but they're basically just going through the Terrigen Mist, stopping all X-Men, and now Inhumans are sort of taking over the world because of the Terrigen Mist. I don't know. You think there's an update on Cyclops here, but it really doesn't give you the answers in between those eight months of whatever. And could Secret Wars please be done? Gee whiz. I don't know. Long-standing question. What did Nick tell Thor that made him unworthy, that made this female Thor? Jason Aaron writing this. It's the second easy, the second issue. Uh, easy to see. There's lots of politics and family. Um, but... The only thing that I really like about this is the new hammer throw because a female, the female Thor throw of the hammer is quite remarkable. Definitely not angular. So that's one cool thing. Peter Stark. We all know Peter Stark as the new Amazing Spider-Man, and he has gone international. Well, people aren't really liking that. So, well, some people aren't liking that. So there's a couple of Spider-Man titles coming out. One of them is Spidey, number one, which is fit for teens. It's the same origin story. It's uh, concise, and it's a little bit updated to the 
2015s, if you will. It's a good alternative to the current ASM, Peter Stark. But then they even went so far as to make the Amazing Spider-Man title into 1.1 to 1.4. Even in the beginning, it does say about international and being sort of like the Peter Stark that we, we are coming to know. But uh, this is a nice story developing, and it's really not Peter Stark. Um, wonderful highlights in this is Bianchi or Silva. And um, it's like usually they have shadows that are black. There's a lot of white, you know, highlights on this. So really, I, you can look really closely. It's really cool what they did with the art here. I don't know what the Santarians are, but that's part of it. Um, Dennis Hopeless, I think it is, uh, an all new X Men number two. Definitely on the bubble. Uh, the Ghost of Cyclops, to me, remind me uh, very much of the Robin War in DC, that they're sort of, you know, to the homage of the good or bad guy. Pickles is now a Banff that I remember from Amazing X-Men from Nightcrawler. I don't, I don't really know where this is going. You think you get some answers about Cyclops and his death eight months ago, but again, we don't not. So we still have yet to do that. Now we have Battle World uh, Ultimate End Issue 5. I got this just because it's so very bite my Brian Michael Bendis. There is in here, and you, you know, if it's just on the shelf, you got to look at it if you're not having this, but I definitely recommend picking it up if you have the extra cash just to see a 70 panel splash page. Literally 35 and 35. 70 panels, and then as they sort of go away from existence, those pop out and they all have the same expression, but they're talking differently. It's a really cool thing just to see, not even, I mean, I didn't even have one through four, but uh, to, to see so many different heroes in it, it was worth it to me, um, to, to see. Don Candy Avengers, that's uh, Jerry Duggan. I would say that Cable saved this issue. The art is ample, but Cable and Deadpool can't save this Avengers title in my opinion, um, Shredded Man is uh, revealed in that one. Moving on to DC, um, halfway through people, I just want to say Earth 2 Society number seven, they actually have four people now working on the uh, art in terms of colorists and artists. So you have Jimenez and Borges who are doing the art, and then you have Sanchez and Blonde doing the coloring. This, I... I was really, really impressed, enough so that this may actually make my pull list. Um, the story is so-so, but the art on this one is probably one of the best DC arts that I have found, barring the Superman American Alien. Now, speaking of art, Justice League 46 screwed the pooch. Oh, God, it's part six. It says that up here, part six. But my God, the art was so bad it detracted from the actual... Um, storyline and it's a very big storyline everything's coming to a head um and i think tomorrow is 47 so we're gonna know a lot more there i mean they're bringing in crime syndicate from earth three that's sort of cool because that's trinity war that goes way back if not two years but the art ruined it for me i always make the joke that i have no idea why starfire number seven um why I always get this, and that's actually on my pull list, but I'll tell you what, Amanda Connor has these little pearls every once in a while, and in the beginning of this, we have Corey Starfire talking to a dolphin in a dolphin take, and the date shows up, and it's like, dude, let's go, and the dolphin says, what the hell is that about, and she goes, oh, she, she's, I'm late, and you know, it's, it's time for me to go, and the dolphin says, what's time, and Corey says the best way she can explain it is, time is what prevents everything from happening at once. I don't know where Amanda got that, but I will remember that forever. Time is what prevents everything from happening at once. Batman Superman number 27. This is when Superman needs help. So now there's a team with him, Batgirl, and, and who else we got here? Red Hood. Um, Vandal Savage is the baddie. And uh, I got to say that Greg Pak, again, is a good storyteller, but not prolific. It's on my pull list, so I get it. Brian Hitch is back on JLA, which I like because it's the new uh, new 52 garb, if you will. Aquaman with orange scale mail and, and uh, the silver Wonder Woman before the gold and red Amazon warrior fully garbed uh, Wonder Woman that I think is coming in two months uh, in Justice League. So JLA, Brian Hitch is back. Uh, I'm not sure why it was delayed. Part five, that was the Martian Manhunter sort of one shot. Um, it's, it's a bridging issue. It's nothing special in that, sorry to say. Yeah. Uh, Deathstroke, number 13. Slade's still trying to find his daughter Rose and has to find him through Amanda Waller. Of course, Harley is playing him back and forth. Uh, again, another bridging issue, if you, if you ask me. Um, though Snakebite is 
shaping up to be quite a villain. DK3, the Master Race. You know, I'm tired of it. Frank Miller, I was so happy of it. It's already issue two, and I just may drop it. I was thinking getting the hardcover and getting the slipcover case and all that. This is really just not... It's, it's holier than thou. How about that? Moving on. I don't want to spend any more time. Saga, number 32. I don't know how BKV does it. Alano and Marco together again. Thumbs up. It's just great to see them uh, again together. Um, I feel much better, you know, don't you? And I would like to say that the imagination just doesn't stop. I don't know if it's Fiona Staples that does it, but let's just see you're breaking into a place. you got constables that are showing up, and they're bipedal. They're, like, in their riot gear uniforms, but the actual body is all made of flame. And they're walking around, and they're talking, but it's just all flame air stuff. That's just doesn't get old. He keeps on coming up with it. That's the beautiful thing. So IF Fairyland, uh, the last week's poll was just so haphazard when I'm reading the all new X-Men and the uh, Inhumans and, and the Extraordinary X-Men. I wasn't really having fun, so I said, Scott, going for F Fairyland. And this is just, you know, I love it. It's just Mad Magazine meets Ren and Stimpy, and you just get to watch just stupid, obliterating, gratuitous violence. I love it. Keep up the twist, Scotty. And I'm sorry, did I go? Yes, that was number three, and this is number two. I had to backlog it. Um, yeah. Ren and Stimpy in hell. So we have Warren House and Trees. This is another bridging issue. Um, but you do get some answers. Every once in a while, Warren House will go, okay, here's the answer issue. So this is issue 13. It's a rarity for Ellis that you get some answers. Uh, pretty gnarly and bloody bad battle that sort of happens at the end, too, on that. But that's on my pull list, and I'll, I'll, I'll keep with Warren Ellis on that one. Now we have Beauty, number five. Everyone was very, very hip on this, but the plot, the plot seems to be right in front of us. It is moving, but nothing's really happening. So I don't know if December was bridging issue week. Um, however, Matt Hawking symmetry is in the back. So if you want to see a little snippet of that, that's in beauty number five. And the art is coloring, fitting, insightful, if you will. Lucifer, number one, out of vertigo. People are really loving this. To me, it's a very much of a trope. You have Lucifer, and you have the, the angels that are sort of badass, but they're supposed to help. It's, to me, it's, um, I don't know, Trouble in Hell, Trouble in Heaven. It was a Constantine TV show. It's the same thing over and over again. But uh, the art is pure and ample. Um, trade waiting on Lucifer. Outcast, number 14, the quickest thing you can read. Robert Kirkman makes a screenplay, even has the inserts and different camera angles, and it's just zip, and then you're done with it. And most of the time, I read the black letters that's taking the time. Um, the hype is there, though. I don't know why Cinemax seems like an odd channel for them to make the deal, but Cinemax it is. Um, and apparently Angels may be introduced in this one. As put from Lucifer, there's some talk in the back that Angels will be introduced in Outcast. That, that'll be pretty big. Betty Brightweiser, which I love through Fade Out, some of the best colors around. Apparently she does Muay Thai as well as ice sculpting. And in the back of that, there's a picture of a moose ice sculpt. That is like the best ice sculpt I've ever seen in picture of real life. The goddamn Jason Aaron, I don't know what the hell I'm dropping this. It's intriguing, it's bloody, it's biblical, but it's just not grabbing me at all. And last and least is Grant Morrison's nameless. I'm tired of him yanking our chain. This is going to be a really cool story. Oh, that really didn't happen. It reminds me of Annihilator. Annihilator was a cool mini series. I think it was six, maybe eight. And Grant Morrison always likes to get you involved in the first three issues, so you're buying it and then just ruin your brain. Mom issues four or five and have a bad ending six and seven. I uh, used to be a noobler after three years of reading so much. So that is my professional opinion. So, in the, in, the, in the days of Star Wars, what is the highest and lowest stock price in the last two, three months of, of Disney? And then I'll send you this. PK, comic book, four, one, one. Hit, hit subscribe. If you like this, just the rambling, you know. Oh, almost got a Toyota commercial. That's another reason why I do this. I was on Check Avail, which means I was runner-up, just like the Steve Jobs movie. So I guess I went from Mr. Callback to Mr. Check Avail. I didn't get either. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year.